What's up YouTube, back another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be going to this book right here. What they never told you in history class, volume one. I'm gonna to touch upon a couple things, okay? And I wanna give my commentary behind it, right? So before we go into that, we're gonna do this real quick. So in the Norris Webster Dictionary, it says Negro, right? It says that the pronunciation of this word is Negro, right? And then we go here to the strong concordance. They call Christians niggas. Okay? So get a piece of paper and pen. Write down the word nigger or negro. I talked about this before, but this is going to play a big major role in what I'm about to bring it out. Okay? Uh, go to the second N-word website to get more confirmation on this on this word. It's an ancient sacred word pertaining towards black people. You know what I'm saying? So, let's go into this. So, my question to you all is, <clears throat> when you go to school, what are the uh, major topics that you that we are forced to learn? That's science, math, reading, and history, right? So, in this topic of discussion, we're going to be going into history. So let's just imagine that we if we are first day of school, right? We go into history class, right? Depending on what grade you're in, right? And we are taught to learn about our presidents. We don't know who these people are, but we just taught to learn about them. I say, oh, this person was a president. He was a 16th president, or Thomas Jefferson's a president. Don't know, don't know anything about these people. We are forced to learn about these people. So let's get into let's get into what they said about. People of color, black people, Negro. Let's see what they said about us. So, so just imagine you sit in the class, reading about a person you never knew, and behind your so while you reading about him in, in history class, behind your back, before you even born, he he's already said something bad bad about you. But let's go into it. They, by them I mean these white people. So. It's on page 10. Presidents. Okay. It says. Uh, U.S. President. George Washington. In a letter addressed to. Captain John Thompson. On July 2nd. 1766. He stole a slave named Tom for liquor. He says. I, I advance as a suspicion. Only that. Only that blacks. Are inferior to whites both in body and mind. Never yet could I find that a black had uttered a thought above the level of plain narration, ever saw an elementary track of painting or sculpture. U.S. President Thomas Jefferson, he says, I have no purpose to introduce political and social equality between the whites and black races. That I am not nor ever have been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor of qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. And I would say in addition to this, that there is a physical difference between the two, which in my judgment will probably forever forbid their living together upon the footing of a perfect equality. And inasmuch as it becomes a necessity that there must be a difference, I am in favor of the race to which I belong, having the superior position. Abraham Lincoln, he had a debate with Stephen Douglas in 1858. He says, now as to the Negroes, I entirely agree with you that as a race, and in and in the mass, they are all together. They are all together inferior to the to, to white, to the white. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. He wrote a letter in 1906. It says, "It was the administration of Woodrow Wilson, however, which took the most drastic action against Negroes, 
it's, it was in Wilson's administration with his express approval that federal civil service workers were segregated, segregated by race in their employment with separate eating and toilet facilities. When a Negro leader protested this segregation, Wilson all but ordered him out of his office because his language was insulting. See that? U.S. President Woodrow Wilson, right here. Uh, he said, uh, let's see, it says see that. Uh, you got William Taft, William Howard Taft. These are people that we, know, that we read about in school, don't know shit about these people. William Taft began his administration in 1909 by assuring the white South that he would appoint, that he would appoint no federal office officials in their region who would be offensive to them. And of course, the white South knew what he meant. He said, William, South, William Taft says, I have a strong feeling of repugnance when I think of the Negro being made our political equal. And I would be glad they could be colonized, sent to heaven, or got rid of in any way descent or, or or got rid of in any way in any descent way. You see that? You're not done. We're not done yet. We're just getting started. These are white people that we are forced to learn about when we go to school. We don't know shit about these people. But they talking shit behind our back. The school books are, are nothing but a are nothing but a smoke screen. It's a system. He goes on to say that um, you have somebody named James A. Garfield. He wrote a letter to Jacob D. Cox, July, July 26, 1865. Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson said that the Negroes in the South had been a host of dusky dusky children untimely put out of school. Conditions had approached the stage of, of ruin until at last the whites, who were the real citizens, got control again. Uh, it says here that you have somebody down here named the White Eisenhower. Okay, listen to what he said. The White Eisenhower, quoted from Eisenhower, the president note. The president nobody knew by Arthur Larson. He says, I want folks to walk down the hall. I want folks to walk down the hall at the Justice Department and look in the door and see a nigger sitting there. Now, they don't realize that they're calling us God because we are God. Because all they did was do, the only thing they did was use reverse psychology. The only reason you you associate the word nigger or nigger as being a derogatory term because is because of what you have seen on TV through that bullshit ass movie Roots and through the Atlantic the, through the so called Atlanta slave trade, you know what I'm saying, and through uh, certain slaves memoirs that they read about that we read about and say that oh the white man called me a darkie, the white man called me a nigger. You know what I'm saying? But let's keep on going. U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson, a remark made to Thurgood Thurgood Marshall, he says, blacks are genetically less intelligent than whites. See that? Uh, U.S. President Richard Nixon, a belief expressed by Mr. Nixon according to one of his top advisors. American blacks can only marginally benefit from federal programs because blacks, quote, blacks are genetically inferior to whites. So, you have here your money. You got the dollar bill, the five dollar bill, the fifty dollar bill, and the twenty about twenty dollar bill. And it says see that several several past presidents and slave owners are on America's paper paper currencies. Thomas Jefferson on the one dollar bill, slave owner. I mean, Thomas Jefferson on the two dollar bill. George Washington 
Alexander Hamilton, Andrew Jackson, Ulysses Grant, Benjamin Franklin. These are these are slave. These people had slaves, and they were racist against black people, against Negroes. Well, let's keep on going. We're not we're not done yet. We're just scratching the surface. So here you have here. Now there's a lot of controversy about John Hanson being the first black president. You know what I'm saying? But why would he be? Why? How come this man could not have been the first black president? Because you Negroes are still stuck in that white man's white supremacy brainwash bullshit. I'm calling out for what it is. The uh, the Newabi and Moore's newsletter edition, volume one, edition, volume sixteen, October 19, uh, 1997, 1997, shocked the world with this incredible revelation. The first, the first president of the United States was a black man, a Moore. Okay? George Washington was not the first president of the United States. He was a knight. The real first president of the United States was John Hanson, who understood the importance of the, of the war and was concerned. Quote, he served as president from uh, 80, uh, 1781 to 82 AD. In fact, he sent 800 pounds of sterling silver by his brother Samuel Hanson to George Washington to provide the troops with his shoe, with shoes. Okay? Let's keep on going. And then so we so they have here, this is a picture of John Hanson, the first president. This dude looks like my grand he like somebody's granddaddy. You know what I'm saying? One of our grandparents. And it says they even have a bronze statue of John Hanson at statutory a, a statutory hall in the White House. It looks like it looks just like the original picture. By the way, only the greatest Americans are placed in this hall. So you have a you have a mulatto John Hanson. This is when they start fucking up his image, right? And then you have over here the John Hanson statue, right? And then you have a, a John Hanson false statue of him, right? Okay. Let's keep on going. So you have the. That the uh, the original Statue of Liberty was a black woman. You can look this up on your own. Quite sure a lot of you, a lot of you have heard of this, right? Now, let's go into this real quick. So I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Um, okay. This. So you have here the movie. The Ten Commandments. And there's Charlton Heston, right? He's playing Moses. And we know that Moses was a black man. Okay? Now, here's Charlton Heston playing Moses in the, in the movie The Ten Commandments, right? So, if, if Charlton Heston is supposed to be playing Moses, and Moses is supposed to be a, a so-called prophet of God is supposed to be a, a, a is supposed to be a, he's, he is supposed to love God right whatever we know that the word God is a is a new word that's oh that's a, that's a new word but if he is supposed to be portraying Moses in the Bible right one of God's prophets well this right here this is smoke screen. This is bullshit. Because we're, we are about to to read out of his own mouth that if he was a true, if, if this man, Charleston, Charleston Heston, was supposed to be playing Moses, the black man, right? And leading the children of Israel and things like that. Leading God's chosen people. And he's supposed to be one of God's chosen people, right? Well, he's going, to, he's going against the grain. He's going against God. Right? We talk about in terms of characters and character. So let's read what he says about black people. Because we know that they, they so called what we call God. What we call God. Black folks came up with that concept and idea. Okay? Now, so let's read it. Actors, famous people. 
Mainstream America is depending on you, counting on you to draw your sword and fight for them. These people, mainstream America, meaning white white people, have previously little time or little re- or, or have uh, pre- have previously little time or resources to battle the misguided propaganda of blacks or Negroes who raise a militant fist with one hand while they try while they seek uh, preference with the other. We have reached that point in time when our national social policy originates on quote Oprah. I say it's time to pull the plug. Actor Charleston Heston speech delivered before the Conservative Free Congress Foundation in Washington, D.C. 1998 transcript obtained by the Violent, by the Violent Policy Center. He says, quote, I believe in white supremacy. Until the blacks are educated to a point of responsibility, I don't believe in giving authority and positions positions of leadership and judgment to irresponsible people. Stop. He believes in white supremacy. This movie, The Ten Commandments, was all white folks. This movie, The Ten Commandments, that comes on every Christmas or every Easter, whatever that, whenever that shit comes on, he just came. He just said out of his own mouth that he believes in white supremacy. So Moses was a Negro. It's even in the Quran. Mohammed was a was a Negro. He was a black man. The Quran was written by a black man. All these religious books. These texts are written by black people. Okay? Well, let's keep on going. We're not done yet. Actor John Wayne. Interview in Playboy. May 1971. He says, quote, But there are some things inborn in you. My father was once stabbed, was, was once stabbed by a Negro. Um, let's drop. Let's keep on going. Let's drop. Let's go over here to Evangelist Billy Graham, in a letter to Stephen Offer, Oprah, nineteen forty. He says, "The Negro is a child, and with children, nothing can be done without the use of authority." With uh, with regard to the Negroes, then I have a formula. I'm your brother. It is true, but your elder brother. Okay. Now let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. The school system is, is corrupt. They're not teaching true history. Okay? Now let's keep on going. We all know about the slave trade and all that shit, whatever, right? So now we get into the sports entertainment business. With basketball and things of that nature. Let's see what these white people got to say about black about Negroes. So it says here that Major League Sports owner Marge Scotch, owner of the Cincinnati Reds, made these statements as reported by Mr. Jones, a former employee in the New York Times, November 26, 1992. He says. I, I think people are afraid to speak out on this sub, on the subject. White people have white heroes. I myself can't cannot equate to black heroes. I'll be truthful. I, I respect them, but I need white people. It's in me, and I think that he said, and I think the Cavaliers have too many blacks. Major League Sports owner Ted uh, uh, Stipen, former owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. A professional basketball team, he said in the New York Times, December 6, 1982, he says, quote, Blacks make better athletes than whites because they were bred to be that way. He added that the difference between whites and blacks go all the way back to the Civil War, when during the slave period, the slave owner would breed his big black with his big woman so that they could have a big kid. 
That's where it all started. He also said that if more blacks become coaches, that there's not going to be anything left for white people. He says, quote, I mean, all the players are black, he said. The only thing that the whites control is the coaching jobs. You see that? Let's keep on going. So that's in the, that's, we got, we got more that's in the, um, that's in the sports entertainment. That these white people are talking shit about black people, Negroes. You got here in the, in the political, in politics, they, they talking shit about black people. Okay? All right? So let's keep on going. So you have here a man named Francis Galton. All right? Francis Galton was the earlier leader of the eugenics movement. He coined the word nature and nurture. Nature and nurture. Right, uh, the, superior, uh, the superiority of a race cannot be preserved without pride of blood and and an, uncomprom com an uncompromising attitude toward the lower races. Right. So, so Francis Galton. Let's look these people up. Who are these people? We got. We supposed to be learning about. All right, here's this white man, Francis Galton, right? And he is the one who came up with that, this bullshit called eugenics. He, uh, right here, look what I just read. He also coined the phrase, nature versus nurture. Right? And it says, debates involve whether human beings is determined by the environment. Right? Okay? So, what is the word eugenics? What is the eugenics? Okay, so it's eugenics. is a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of a human population by, ex by excluding, through a variety of morally criticized means, certain genetic groups judged to be inferior and promoting other genetic groups judged to be superior. The definition of eugenics has been a matter of debate since the term was coined by Francis Galton in 1883. The concept predates the term. The concept predates the, predates the term. Plato suggested applying the principle of selective breeding to humans around 400 BC. Uh, earlier advocates of eugenics considered it as a way of improving groups of people. In modern usage, the term eugenics has close ties to scientific racism and white supremacy so your uh, eugenics is white supremacy and this white man Francis Galton came up with this bullshit and guess what he was a he was a white he was a white supremacist okay let's keep on going. So, now we get into the scientific racism, interior intelligence, right? And we're going to go here to, uh, we want to go here to, uh, we're going to look up this man right here, Francis H.C. Crick. This is your so-called man who came up with the so-called discovered the DNA. France, uh, uh, what's this dude's name? Francis H. Crick. Right here. Let's look, let's look these white people up. Francis H. Francis H. Crick, right? He's the so-called co he's the so-called co-author of the DNA discovery. Right? But let's see what's so you know Wikipedia is not gonna give you the whole scenario. They're gonna leave some shit out. So, what did this white man leave out that he's not saying on this Wikipedia document? So, what did he say? Let's get into it. What did, what did this white man say? Uh, you have here scientists, 
Nobel, Nobel Prize winner Francis H. Crick, right here. Francis H. Crick, as reported by Professor Daniel J. Cleese, a science historian at California Institute of Technology, in the book in the name of, Eugen of eugenics, here we go with that eugenics, that's that white supremacy shit, he says, quote, Blacks are not academically competitive with whites. In selective institutions, failure is not looked upon with, dis with disgrace. You see that? He says blacks are not academically competitive with whites. He's a he's a racist. He's a racist. Okay? Let's keep on going. We're not done yet. You have here Charles Darwin. We know about Charles Darwin. Right? Let's look up Charles Darwin. These are so-called so be, so be so uh, scientists and, and uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, things of that nature. You can't trust these people, man. Let's look up this white racist. I'm coming, like, let's just use this example. Let's just say I'm coming to this thing brand new. I don't know shit about these people, but I'm forced to learn about these people in school. So here's Charles Darwin, right? He's, a, he's this dude, this, this the guy with the evolution, right? Select, here you go with that selective breeding, okay? This is selective breeding. This is dealing with, with uh, uh, what do you call it, genetic engineering. Right? See, these white people, they know where they come from. But they don't want to admit it. So let's, let's go into what Charles Darwin said. He wrote a book called The Descent, the Descent of Man. In 1871. So he, read, he wrote this book, right? And they're not going to put what he said on, on Wikipedia. So let's go into what, he, what they left out. And here it is right here. In this section of the book, Darwin also turns to the question, what would, what would after his death be known as social Darwin, Darwinism and eugenics? What did he say? He said, we should so far yield to the evident designs and propose or, uh, and pro, uh, proposes uh, a providence as to be as to be both willing and anxious to see the Negroes like the Indians and all other affecti uh, and dingy hued races gradually exterminated from the face of the whole earth. He don't want he don't want you all here. These folks, these white folks don't want y'all here. They want your ass exterminated. Okay? I'm not making it I'm not making this shit up. This is coming out of their own goddamn mouth. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna then then so he 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 said this shit back in 871, but he had to backtrack his statement because he because he knew where he come from. So let's let's go into it. Um creators, the creators of the human race, the African origin of man. Okay, so so who like like say fans who who's come up with these definitions? Okay? Oh this means that and that means this. Like like right here. We know from just our so called definition and words that this is a baboon. But how but how do we actually know that, that what we call a baboon is not really a, a cat or a dog? Okay? How do we? How, how come I'm not entitled to say that that this so-called baboon that I've been taught all my life to to be trained to say is a baboon? How come I can't say that, that this is a horse? Or how come I can't say that that, that this is a bear? Why well, do I have to go along the program and say that this is a this is a baboon? Right? And then we look at these 
for the dictionaries, it says, oh, well, in Noah Webster dictionary, he said this. Well, who the, who the fuck is Noah Webster? And why do I have to go along with this definition where he say it's this? What this what this actual particular uh what this particular item is supposed to mean? These are the questions you niggas don't ask. But let's keep on going. So you got the creators of the human race, the African origin of man. The first man and uh, first man and first woman were black. So I talked about this before. You should, and you all who've been following my channel should already know that the black man and woman is is God, so called what we call God, the creator. Or the source. Because God, the word God, if you spell it backwards, is the word dog. Right? Okay? You spell the word backwards, it's dog. So he's calling, you're calling God a dog. So, it says here that, um, September 23rd, 1981, informed us that science, quote, scientific evidence has been clear on the African origins of humanity since the 1970s. In 1994, Kabil uh, Sephora, uh, Sephora, along with Paloa Manonzi and Albert Paazas, published his magnum opus, or his greatest work, The History and Geography of Human Genes. And they say here that they they uh, was doing it was doing a so called family tree, right? And it says that these two guys right here, Kabila Saforza, Saforza, genealogy places Africans at the root of the tree, with the Europeans and ages branching off from them. We know the root is the foundation of a tree. Right? Drop down here. It says that scientists have claimed to found, have found our common ancestor. A woman who lived 200,000 years ago and left resilient genes that are carried by all mankind. Scientists are calling her Eve. This, this, white, white, this is white people are calling her Eve was more likely a dark-haired, black-skinned woman. Let's keep on going. So it says that, that the New York Times in an article entitled Modern Man, Origin, linked to a single female ancestor on March 26, 1988, reported that, quote, calculations of the slow changes have to, that have taken place in human DNA over the over millennium indicate that, quote, Everyone alive today may be a, may be a descendant of a single female ancestor who lived in Africa. So we know that what women women are able to give birth to men and women. Men can't do it. Men cannot do it. Okay. 140,000 to 280,000 years ago, scientists at the university of Berkeley have reported the studies led by Dr. Alan Wilson support the view that modern man quote, homo, uh, homo, homo sapiens originated in Africa about 200,000 years ago. Now, let's keep on going. I'm quite sure a lot of you already know this, right? Okay. So, these white folks are naming our ancestors Homo habilis, Australopithecus, all these, all these goddamn names they're coming up with. Who gives them the right to call our answers to that stuff? Come on, some modern man and, and, and prehistoric man. And they're just people. Okay, so now, now listen to what Charles Dar Charles Darwin had to retract. He had to retract this statement, his beliefs. He says. The idea that humans first evolved in Africa is as old as the idea that they have evolved at all. In 1871, Charles Darwin wrote in The Descent of Man, what we just wrote right here, in The Descent of Man, what he wrote, I'm quite sure he, they, uh, when they published this, it was in there, then they took the shit out. Okay? He says to that, YouTube might try to take this video down. Um... 
Charles Darwin wrote in The Descent of Man, it is somewhat more probable that our earlier progenitors lived on the continent of on the continent, on, on the African continent than elsewhere. So he says that it is more probable that our earlier progenitors, what is progenitors? Forefathers. Okay? Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Mark Ridley, a lecturer in the development of of zoology at the University of Oxford in a, in a review for the New York Times August 27, 1997 of a book Echo Homo by Noel T. Boaz provides a response to that question. He says, most anthropologists think humans originated in East Africa, in Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanz uh, Tanzania where the, where the uh, main earlier human fossils have been found. A similar point was made by Dr. M.G. Seeling, Selig. He says, quote, the earliest race of beings were Negroid. Negroid. You see that? Keep on going. It says, new debate over humankind's, new debate over humankind's uh, uh, ancestry. Okay? Right here. Let's drop down here. So the home of our, the home of our fathers was, was that African hi, uh, highland, reaching north from the Cape to the lakes of the Nile. From the evidence, Professor Jackson drew his log logical conclusions in his scholarly work, Man, God, and Civilization. He says, quote, since there's overwhelming evidence that the human race originated in Africa, then all mankind has an African ancestry. Since, uh, hence, all men must be Negroes. It says that, quote, of one, of one blood, said St. Paul, God made all the races of, of the earth. So, we know that the color of blood is red. Right? That's what we've been taught. So, if the color of blood is red, who came up with all these different blood types? A, B, O, negative, all this shit. Who came up with that stuff? Okay? These are questions you all need to ask. Alright? Alright? Now I'm still reading this. I'm on page uh I'm on page 140. Okay? I'm on page 140. So they got here this picture. Where did the human race begin? He's a white folk asking a question. It says also, it referred to the fact that today it is generally agreed that evolution has two main branches. One branch leads to modern man, Homo sapiens. The other belongs to a kind of small brain ape man called Ophelopithecus, which, beca which became extinct about a million years ago. On the Homo line, the brain got bigger and skills evolved with each successive species, Habilis, Handyman. Earlier Homo made stone tools. Erectus, the Homo erectus was the first to go out of Africa and colonize Eurasia or Europe. Um, but but that's 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 these white folks coming up with all these names, Homo habilis and all this shit. Who gives them the right to call them that? I know that the average Negro is not going to ask no damn questions. Okay? One 
one second. I'm going to keep on going. These are the questions you all need to ask. You're not asking no questions. You're just going along with the program. So like here, like here, um, he says the author of history of Egypt, Egypt continues, quote, the massive temples and obelisks covered with hieroglyphics and the colossal statues, which have already outlived 3,000 years, prove the high civilization of the kingdom, even before the Jews had become a people, before the Greeks had got an alphabet. Um, says Israel cannot become a nation without Egypt. The first and greatest of Israel's prophets was rescued from a watery, gra from a watery grave, nurtured, schooled, and outwardly fitted for his subline uh, legation by the, daughter, by the daughter of Egypt's king. Abraham himself through, I mean, Abraham himself, though from quite another um, section of the world, was ministered unto by Egypt. Okay. Um, so we gave we gave we gave you all everything: religion, art, government, science, everything you think of. Black folks came up to, came up with it already. Okay. I talked about this before. Right? So. They're showing here. Popes, you have black popes, like right here. This dude right here, Saint Maurice, the, the Pope. Okay. Right here. So, like you see, when you see this right here, this image right here, this is where this is where Adolf Hitler got this from. Right here, from a from a black man. Okay. Says Moses must have been a, Moses must have been an Egyptian priest. W. C. Uh, Waddell's translation entitled Manito, London Harvard University Press 1640 refers to the fact that Moses had an Egyptian name and lived in an Egyptian city. Um, quote the Egyptians titled two of their most sacred, two of their most important cities, a new. Hamathis in the south and Heliopolis on in the north, where Ray or Ra was the most important deity, the sun, and were and where uh, and were the best educated of the Egyptians received their instructions. The fragments of Manito, of Manito say that Osar, Os, uh, Osarsis, Osarset, Osarsis himself, who later changed his name to Moses, was a native of northern Anu. See that? Another case in point is Jesus Christ, who was also studied in Egypt. The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, section 9, I mean section uh, 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 11, right? Life
life and works of Jesus Christ. Okay? Read about that. Right? Talked about Christianity as a black man religion. You got the catacombs in Rome. Right? I just took you through a couple of sections in this book. Let's go here to uh, one second. Like here, let's go back to it again. Uh, Moses was black. Moses himself was black, right? We know that he turned his, put his hand in his shirt, he came out black, right? Moses was a Negro. According to the Mohammedan tradition, Moses was a black man, right? As may be seen from the following passages in the Quran, they say the same damn thing. Um, Mohammed was black, right? J. A. Rogers informs us, quote, in fact. A contemporary of, of his of his description, or they describe they describe him they describe him as a large mouth and bluish color, with hair that was neither straight nor cur nor curly. That is, his hair was probably frizzy, right? Like the fuzzy wuzzy bluish also happens to be the precise color of certain very Negro natives of Sudan. Muhammad's mother was also an African. His grandfather, Abdi El Matileb, is spoken of as being very dark. It says he might have been a slave. Abdi or Abdi originally meant slave. Right here's the references right here. Al Jihad asserts that Abdi Al Matileb, grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad, was black as a knight and magnificent. He got Taoism. He was black, right? Also, oh, we know that Osiris was, was black. Okay? So, I want to, uh, in my video right here, just to go through a couple, I just went through a couple things in this book to show you that what you have been trained in school is a goddamn lie. All these presidents that you, that we are forced to learn about are nothing but racist. Okay, they know that 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 all races come from black people, Negroes, and without us, they wouldn't even be here. They would not be here. Okay, this is this is facts. So I have to finish reading this. I'm almost finished reading this. But like I said, it doesn't matter. All the gods were black. You can paint it white all you want to, but that's not what the facts show. Saviors of mankind were black. The saviors of mankind from Buddha to Jesus were black. The name of Krishna means the black one. And he and he thus is the first place, and he thus in the first place comes into the line with deities of other faith, notably the Osiris of Egypt, to say nothing of the black manifestation of Greek deities and of Jesus Christ. Krishna as the black one means the black. They are, called, they are Caucasians today who still chant the name of the black man. They are known as the Har or the Hair of the Har Krishna organization to some. In fact, their leader has distinct African features if one looks at, at his picture on, on, many of the, on many of the books. See that? You got Buddha, he's black. You got Willie Hare. Okay? Quetzalcoatl was recognized as the Messiah by seers 
or prophets, and his hair was red, his complexion was black, his hair was woolly. So it says Christ left left Egypt or whatever and went over to went over there to America. Why wouldn't it be possible for him to take on this name? He looks like them. He, look, he looks like those people. How come he can't take on this name? He got woolly hair. He's black. Huh? Okay. What did what did Josephus uh, say? Christ looked like. He said Christ was a short black black skinned dude. Alright. White people worshiped black gods, deities. Negroes were first worshipped in Greece and Rome. White masses bowed down to black deities, to black people. The rites of Apollo were founded by uh, Delphos. And his Negro mother, Melanus. And the worship of black eyes to the horse were popular in Rome and the Roman colonies as far as north as Britain. When this letter evolved into the worship of the black Madonna and the black Christ, Christian whites also bowed down to them. Negroes, as was said, were deified in the earlier Greece. Okay? Zeus of Greece, black. Apollo of Greece, black. Osiris of Egypt, black. Isis of Rome, black. Buddha of India, black. Horus, the Fuhai, the Zaha, Quetzalcoatl, Krishna. We went over the God, all over the goddamn world, and we're finding out, we're finding here that all, all these black deities are black people, or Negroes. The same black people these white folks are saying. Uh, that that don't amount to a damn thing. Well, guess what? Your ancestors will bow down to black. Was bow down to Negroes. The alma mater. The multi mommy. The founders of the oracles. The the memon. Well, first idols were always black. Okay. So get out these white. Get out these white white. Uh, supremacy books and pick up some black authors books. You know what I'm saying? The Hebrews were dark skinned African people. So like I said, the Bible is still is still black folks book, but the shit has been twisted up. All that shit about you being put on slave ships and that's 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 a that's bullshit. These are stories. Josephus wrote that Christ was a man of simple appearance, mature age, dark skin, with little hair. He had an afro. A coin of Justinian II, right? And the British Museum shows Christ with the same tightly curled hair as that of the earlier Buddhas. The Cambridge Encyclopedia says, whatever the fact, this coin places beyond doubt that belief that Jesus Christ or Yahshua or, or Quetzalcoatl was a Negro. He is a Negro. So he says that he had the same hair, the same tightly curled hair, curled hair as the Buddha. So what does the Buddha, the Buddha look like? Let's go back here. Here's the image of the Buddha. Let's see. Right here, right here, peppercorn, 
Buddha from early Thailand, right? J. Rogers, the earliest deities were woolly haired Negroes. The peppercorn was hair, the sign, a sign of divinity. Contrast the hairstyle of the pictures at right. Note the difference between how the hair would look for an African bus peppercorn and that of a Caucasian European straight or wavy below. Okay, the picture from the uh, a picture from the New York Times, July '85, shows bust of Nero sculpted in 54 A.D. when the new emperor was a teenager. Okay, they, they said Christ had hair like this, right? Yeah, he, he had he had locks, he had braids. God of the Bible. He has hair like hair like wool. This is facts. Right here. The black hair of the Greek god Apollo, whose rights were founded by a woolly haired Negro, Delphos. Delphos. Little do people realize that the world famous Apollo Theater in Harlem is actually named after a black god with woolly hair. You see that? I'm quite sure a lot of you Negroes used to watch Apollo back in the day and that was named after a black, a black dude. Okay? So with that being said, let me get to back to reading my, my book. Okay. If you want, you can pick it up on your own. It's called "What They Never Told You in History Class," Volume One. YouTube might try to they might try to flag my video, try to take it down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is the most recent book I uh, purchased. Uh, Ching Ak the Diop. here, The African Origin of Civilization, Myth of Reality. And the book is only $5, man. You niggas ain't got $5? You're spending $5 plus the shipping, and you get 300 some pages worth of information. And this dude is doing carbon testing, you know what I'm saying, melanin doses testing, to prove that the, the ancient Egyptians were black people and Negroes. But that being said, Peace.